implementation of the equity crowdfunding regime. Uh, and just, I'll just try and get through these as quickly as I can. Sure. How many potential offers is ASIC currently reviewing under Australia's current crowdfunding regime? Uh, I'll, I'll have to take that on notice, Senator. No worries. Okay. In relation to the potential offers uh, you're currently reviewing, how concerned are you about the risk that they present to investors? Oh, look, I, I think there's a mandated risk warning in all these documents that indicates that um, investing through crowdsourced equity funding is, is risky. Um, so I, I think it's well accepted that there's an element of risk uh, for investors uh, in these offers, um, but it's up to them at the end of the day. Okay. Now, perhaps on notice, could you provide some examples of the instructions you've given to intermediaries, such as the crowdfunding platforms or issuers? Yes, so we've actually issued a, a regulatory guide okay. uh, for the uh, platform operators, and uh, I, I'm happy to provide you with uh, reference to that regulatory guide on notice. Okay, and this, does this uh, ensure that they're presenting a balanced view of the risks involved for investors? Uh, uh, certainly. So th the platform operators have a very important role in, in making sure that um, certain requirements are met, but the public companies that are raising funds also have an important role in making sure that the disclosure is right and again we have issued a regulatory guide to those public companies uh, raising funds which is regulatory guide 261 and actually the regulatory guide for crowdsource uh, uh, platform operators is regulatory guide 262. Okay. So that, that's public guidance in the market. Okay, thank you for that. How does what you're asking companies to do compare with the existing regime such as prospectus development and issuing? Uh, so it's certainly quite different, um, uh, but it is important to bear in mind that this is uh, not what ASIC is asking companies to do. These are legislated requirements. Uh, so the, the disclosure is uh, a different standard and um, in the interest of time I'm happy to provide more Thank detailed you. response on those. Have you received any stakeholder feedback that ASIC's uh, disclosure expectations for crowdfunding campaigns are more stringent? than prospectus requirements for IPOs? Uh, again, these aren't ASIC requirements. These are actually requirements that have been passed by the parliament. Okay. So what specific steps are required by ASIC to implement the new regulations for the proposed private company crowdfunding framework currently being considered by parliament? Uh, well, well, first, uh, we'll have to understand what the final form of the legislation is, and there'll need to be some important uh, changes to our databases and information systems so there's appropriate transparency to the community uh, about so they can recognise what uh, companies are proprietary limited crowdsourced equity funding companies. And how heavily have you been engaging with intermediaries and issuers at the outset of this new regime and do you think there's, it's a sustainable way of engaging with the market both for ASIC and for participants in the new regime? Uh, so certainly we have extensive outreach in terms of um, fintech business models more generally. We have a digital finance advisory committee. Uh, we've had extensive presentations around the country in relation to fintech issues, including on crowdsourced equity funding. Uh, my own view is that there is certainly a place in the Australian market for crowdsourced equity funding, and, and that view is uh, backed up by international experience in various other jurisdictions around the world. The, the real question is, what's the um, sustainable size of the market in Australia? And it's too early to tell at this stage. I think. Okay. Have stakeholders expressed concerns about how long it's taking ASIC uh, to get uh, decisions made on matters related to the implementation of Australia's equity crowdfunding regime? Um, I'm not aware that they have, but again, recognising that the uh, implementing the regime is a matter for the parliament, not for ASIC. Uh, the, the laws need to be in place before we can administer. Okay. Uh, well, there was legislation that passed through Parliament in March of last year to set up the crowdfunding regime. Yes. And I understand that ASIC was given a six-month period to prepare the regulatory and internal systems arrangements to give it effect. Correct. The regime started in October, yet I understand ASIC hadn't given registration approval for, for platforms until January of this year. Yes, that, that was part of a licensing process. Uh, so as you'll appreciate, when, when people want to operate these platforms, they need to be licensed. Uh, and uh, you, you're quite right. 
On the 11th of January, ASIC granted seven uh, Australian financial services licensees to enable um, the provision of crowdfunding services. Did, sorry, uh, for the sake of Hansard, Warren Day, Senior Executive at ASIC. Senator, I take your point about the time frame, but um, ASIC received the first uh, uh, lodgements of those at around 27th of October and authorisations to provide were done in February. So I'd like to know who the people are complaining because we didn't receive any complaints ourselves about that. In fact, we had a lot of compliments about the time frame that it actually took. Yeah. So I'd, I'd, I'd be interested to know more. If you, if you want to pass people on, we'd be interested to know about those. I, okay. I mean, to, to reiterate a very important point, Licensing is a very important process. I mean, really, it ensures that uh, people have the competence and the systems and uh, the expertise that the Australian public would expect uh, so they can be confident in this very important and emerging new uh, financial service in Australia. OK. Sorry, I just want to correct. I was just reminded that, in fact, they were handed out in January, yeah. the start of January. Yeah. So I, I withdraw what I said yes, before January. February. So you know, January, it's a quicker time frame again. So. Again, I, I would reiterate what I said. Okay. But I'm also led to believe that under the legislation being considered by Parliament to reform the equity crowdfunding framework, and there's another six month delay uh, whereby the laws will only take effect after um, six months after royal assent. Uh, I, I don't have direct knowledge of that. I'm happy to take that on notice. Okay. So you, you can't. I, 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 I'm aware of that. Well, we are, we, we are aware of that time frame, but that, that time frame is not in our hands, Senator. Okay, that's a, so that's a matter for the Parliament. Yeah. So that's. So it's not something that's been said by us. <coughs> okay. Um, so that you're not aware of what you are supposed to be doing in that six month period? No, we know what we've got to do. And as um, Commissioner Price indicated, we know those things that we have to do to change. But again, we have to wait to see what the final form of the legislation, legislation is yeah. so that we don't do something and then realise we have to redo it. We would want to wait to see what the end of it is. But then the period of time till royal assent is a matter for, for the parliament. To Mr Day's point, it, um, the, uh, the changes that are set out in the bill will likely require changes to our systems. And that will inevitably require a period of time, but but we'll work whatever with whatever time frame the parliament decides okay. most appropriate. And, and, the good, and the good news is there's already a forerunner there in terms of public companies for this process, mm -hmm. so there will be changes as Commissioner Price says, but I, I, there won't be the types of issues we've dealt. You know, the, the the degree and the extent of that as we have already. Well, um, just finally, Chair, um, can you see why there might be some businesses that are frustrated that? ASIC has received uh, 12 months preparation time for this reform since March of 2017. Well, again, that's a matter for Parliament. Uh, uh, as I said, w uh, whatever Parliament thinks is appropriate, we'll do our level best to meet, okay. meet those requirements. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Curta. Thank you very much to the Office of, as Officers of ASIC. You are free to go. Thank you very much, Mr Shipton. You Thank managed you. to get through unscathed, well I think. Thank, Thank you, much. Senator. Thank you, uh, members of the committee. I now call upon the Productivity Commission. Productivity Commission. The Grants Commission are appearing tomorrow now morning, tomorrow morning now, but Productivity Commission travelled interstate to get here.